morning. I'm so glad you are here to today to worship the Lord, and I hope, I pray you put your burdens onto uh, Jesus' feet and open your heart and mind so that we receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, now, uh, okay, uh, you may see the bag of bulletins, and there, is, there are the sm uh, several announcements. The first one, there is no trust meeting this month, and please stop by the table in the commons and make a name tag to help uh, my family to know the people. Um, and uh, please sign the pew uh, pad each week so that we know the who is come regularly and you know who is a new visitor. And the uh, meeting with the pastor will be held on Tuesday, August 15th at 10 a.m. at Nancy um, Hertzberg, the house. There will be limited to 12 people. The sign up sit in, uh, in the common uh, on the table, so please sign up. And if you would be willing to host the similar event, please contact Marsha. And James Bible study restarted on July 31st. If uh, anyone is interested, contact Debbie Christie. And then backpacks and haircut ministry is coming. There are three ways you can help the project. So please uh, check the ways uh, on the back of the bulletins. There are you know, three ways you can help um, the project. And there is a thank you note from the SPPRC and trustee and finance committee chairs. So I'm going to read it for you. On behalf of the Board of uh, Trustees, SPPR Committee and Finance Committee, we would like to thank all who contribute their labor skills, material time, and patience in making the necessary upgrades and repairs at the Parsonage. The upgrades and repairs have greatly improved the, the appearance of the Parsonage both inside and outside. The transition of our retiring pastor and our new incoming pastor went very well. And uh, thank you to both families. Again, thank to all for your help and know our church is blessed by your contribution. So the Curtis Luke and Marsha Jenks and Pat Maxwell. And also, I'm very thankful for your labors and uh, your contribution and your efforts so that we are uh, very happy to be the part of the Quincy UMC.
please stand if you are able and please join me with a call to worship. Welcome to worship this day. Some have come seeking, some have come struggling. God is truly with you all today, guiding, lifting, and feeding, restoring your soul. Please remain standing and we sing together hymnal book number 599, The Break the, the Bread of Life. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we come before you with open heart, seeking nourishment and sustenance for our soul. You are the source of living water and bread of life that sustain us. We humbly seek your presence and guidance in our lives. As we gather to hear your word, we ask you open our ears to truly listen and understand. May the Holy Spirit speak to us through scripture and the teaching of Jesus, your son, Jesus Christ. We ask all this in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Okay. So we um, confess our faith together by saying the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, and third day he rose from dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge, the quick and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>
did it. So um, now we um, let us pass the peace of Christ so that you move around and then you say the peace be with you and also be with you. So. <coughs> Hey Emily, thank you, thank you for coming forward and then uh, <coughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I start the children's sermon? Hello, yeah, good morning Good morning. Okay. <laughs> hey, Emily. How are you? Good. Good. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, today I'm gonna talking about uh, Jesus feeding the five thousand people. Have you heard that the story? Yeah. Yeah. So um, you know, Jesus and uh, his disciples were very tired, so that they needed to uh, time to rest. So that they went to, uh, you know, the quiet place. But, you know, the crowd, hey, how are you? Come on. <laughs> so what's your name? What? Hayden. Okay, nice to meet you, Hayden. So, <clears throat> you know, Jesus and his disciples went to quiet place. But, you know what? The many crowd uh, were there, and then they were waiting for Jesus. And then, you know, even though he is tired and then he needed to uh, rest, but, you know, he sick the, uh, healed the sick people and uh, he taught the uh, people the kingdom, kingdom of heaven. So, and, <clears throat> and then the dinner time was approaching and then the disciples came to Jesus and then asked Jesus, 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 it's dinner time, time to eat, but we don't have a food. So the please send the people away to village and then the buy food and then, you know, they eat. And then Jesus said, you know, no, you feed them. Wow. Think about it. It's a 5,000 people. And then that's the uh, only count to the men. And if you count the women and children and the men, it's uh, maybe 
15,000 people over there. You know, that's a lot of people. And one boy came to Jesus and then, you know, he gave, you know, the two small fish and then five loaves of bread. And then, you know what? Jesus took them and then, you know, look up, uh, <clears throat> blessed them and broke and then gave it to the people. And then, you know what? The Bible said, in the today Bible said, is the old people ate and until they were full and then 12 baskets were left over. <laughs> that's a miracle, right? Yeah, so that's how I brought the uh, cookies. You know, that's the, only the two cookies are inside. <laughs> and then, <laughs> do you like it, cookies? Yeah, so, you know, think about it. If I were to share these cookies um, with you today, you know, uh, there might be the enough for you and the old people, just the, <laughs> the little bite, right? And then uh, it's impossible to eat the, these two cookies and feed the old people, right? <laughs> and then, but we cannot do that, but God can do that, you know. Can you imagine, you know, these two cookies and feeding all these people. Yeah, that's a miracle. And <clears throat> so, the lesson today, the story is, you know, when we give God the, uh, what we have, you know, and Jesus took it and then blessed it and gave it to the people, and then the miracle will happen. Amen? Yeah. So, uh, this is, uh, oh, you wanna eat this one? Uh, pray together and uh, hold hand and then yeah, please look it after me, okay? Dear God, Dear God. as you, Jesus um, uses the boys five loaves of bread and two uh, fishes and we pray you use us to bless the people we meet each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Yeah, you go back to your seat and
Today, uh, God gave us the scripture, Matthew chapter 14, verse 13 to, uh, through 21. So I'm going to read it for you. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat pri privately to the solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed the sick. As the evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it is already getting late. Send the crowd away so they can go to the village and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. You have here, we have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, and he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, let us pray. Dear God, we come to the house of the Lord and to hear the your word. Open our hearts and minds and to receive your word and leave out what we hear today. May the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And today's story is about Jesus feeding 5,000 people. I bet you have heard this story many times. When the evening approached, the, his disciples came and asked Jesus and to people away to the village to buy food because dinner time was approaching. Jesus said, there is no need to send them away. You give them something to eat. Think about the scene in today's story. The number 5,000 did not include the number of women and children. Some scholars estimate the number of people would be over at least 15,000 because in ancient times, children and women were not counted. There was no way to feed all the 15,000 people at once. The challenge was not only how to feed them, but also how to find markets to buy food for everyone because the area was isolated. How could the 12 disciples feed all those people? How could Jesus give such a perplexing answer? You give them something to eat. Jesus seems to be unrealistic. Why did Jesus say that? Think about who Jesus is. Because Jesus is divine. He is also all-powerful. He could feed everyone by himself. But Jesus did not act alone. Jesus asked his disciples, you give them something to eat. Maybe Jesus asked his disciples, what do you have? What is in your hand? And his disciples might say, we have nothing here except five loaves of bread and two small fish. That's all we have. Jesus asked his disciples to bring him the five loaves of bread and two fish. And then he took, blessed, broke and gave them back to the 12. 
the disciples gave the food to the crowds, and the miracle happened. Everyone ate all, and 12 baskets were left over. Jesus could have done all of that by himself, but he did not do that. Jesus chose to perform this miracle with his disciples' help. Jesus wants us to do his mission and ministry with him. That reminds me of a saying of Saint uh, Teresa of Avila. She was a saint in 16th century. She said, Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassionately on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. We as a Christian may go outside of the church and encounter people who hunger for God's word, truth, and justice. People also have a basic need like a food, shelter, and even clothing. Many people around us need God's love and the good news, but they also have other needs like a food and housing. It is challenging for us to reach out to the, those who are in need. However, we need to trust when we reach out to them, God will help us and bless our ministry. I cannot teach and give specific directions on how to reach out to them. And because every situation and case is different, and we have to respond differently, case by case. It is hard to say this is uh, the best way or that is the best way. One way of doing ministry does not always fit uh, every situation. But I know one thing that is true. God wants to use us for his mission and his glory. God wants us to move one step forward. In short, as Jesus asked his disciples to bring what they have to you, Jesus today invites us to participate in his ministry with our gifts. If you feel I'm not good enough for God, don't worry about it. God wants to use all, regardless of age, education, social class, etc., i give you examples. God uses all, no matter their age. God called Moses when he was 80 to lead the people of Israel out of slavery in Egypt. God called Abraham and Sarah at the age of 75 and 65 to leave their hometown and move to unknown place. God gave their first child Isaac, when Sarah was 90, and Abraham 100. When Zechariah and Elizabeth were very old, God gave them a child, John the Baptist, who prepared the way for the Lord. Think about Mary Magdalene. Magdalene. The Mary had a child, Jesus, when she was around 13 or 14 years old. David was anointed as a king when he was around 15 years old. When Samuel was uh, around 11 years old, he heard the voice of the Lord. God uses all those young people and old people. God also uses all, no matter what size it is. God used 
even a small rock to defeat the giant Goliath. And Jesus used the widow who offered two very small copper coins to give a lesson to the people. God used Moses' staff to pour out water from the rock. God also used advice, wisdom, and experiences. God used Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, to advise Moses not to lead the people alone. God uses our talent, our experiences, wisdom, gifts, resources, and even small things like uh, the five loaves of bread and two small fish for his purpose. It doesn't matter the size, age, and many or few, God wants us to do mission and ministry with him. And the good news is, when we dedicate ourselves to God, God will bless us and multiply our gifts. It is because God is abundant to God, not stingy. You may notice that after the disciples gave the food to the crowd, 12 baskets were left over. Matthew 14, verse 20 says, All ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over, the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. Jesus is abundant and fed over 5,000 people. Our God is generous. God gave the people of Israel manna for 40 years, every morning, every night. God gives enough food to the, his people. They ate food with satisfaction. God provides everything we need. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8 says, God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. God wants to bless humankind. He gave us his son as a savior. How will God not provide us with everything? God gives us enough power and wisdom to serve God and our neighbors since God is generous. Don't think you don't have any power or gifts. God gives us strength and gifts. Some people think they need to do big things to change the world, but that is not true. When we do small acts, with love that will change the world. Mother Teresa cared for thousands of children over the years, but she cared for and loved one individual at a time. And she said, there are no great deeds, only small deeds done with great love. How many of you have watched the movie, The Bruce Almighty? Okay, some, some of you uh, watched that. So I love the movie. You know, I will briefly explain the plot. You know, Bruce, the Gene Carey, has uh, had God's power, and he can do whatever he wants. And Bruce makes some serious mistakes with that power. When God, Morgan Freeman, steps back into the picture, and Bruce asks God to make the world right with a, a miracle. So God's answer surprises Bruce and gives him a new understanding. So let's uh, take a look at the scene the, from the movie. So. Click the one time more.
need your help. Clap on. Clap on. Clap on. Clap on. Clap on. Figures. Well, hello there, Bruce Almighty. <laughs> Not as easy as it looks, is it, son? This God business. They're all out of control. It's mayhem. I, I don't know what to do. Well, you're right on time. Seven o'clock. Seventh at seven. Wonderful thing. No matter how filthy something gets, you can always clean it right up. There were so many. I just gave them all what they wanted. Yeah. But since when does anyone have a clue about what they want? So what do I do? Parting your soup is not a miracle, Bruce. It's a magic trick single mom who's working two jobs and still finds time to take her kid to soccer practice, that's a miracle. A teenager who says no to drugs and yes to an education, that's a miracle. People want me to do everything for them, and what they don't realize is they have the power. You want to see a miracle, son? Be the miracle. I love the, the last part Morgan Freeman said, um, parting your soup is not a miracle. It's a mirac magic trick. A single mom who's working two jobs and still find time to take uh, her son to soccer practice, that's a miracle. A teenager who says no to drugs and yes to an education, that's a miracle. People want me to do everything for them. What they don't realize is they have the power. You want to see a miracle? Be the miracle. You think your gifts are small and tiny, but God uses and bless them, and a miracle will happen. Jesus took a little boy's five loaves and two fish. That looks trivial. No one cares about five loaves of bread and two fish. Some people might say, how could those small things feed 5,000 people? However, Jesus took bread, broke, and gave them back to the disciples. And then they started giving the food to the people. A miracle happened. The miracle occurred when the boy gave Jesus what he had in his hand. When we give Jesus what we have, God will bless them and use them for ministry and mission. That's a miracle. You donate your talent for your neighbors, that's a miracle. You give God and others what you have even small things, like a two small coupon coins, that's a miracle. And you treat others with love, that's a miracle. And you forgive those who hurt you, and that's a miracle. And you step out in faith and serve others with grace, love, and compassion, that's a miracle. You welcome strangers and open your heart to someone that is a miracle. Who knows if the little one makes a huge difference? Who knows if your small act feeds over 5,000 people? And you know what? Our gifts and talents 
are enough for all and everyone. Remember what Saint Teresa of Avila said, Jesus Christ has no body now but yours. We are the body of the, his body. God uses us for his kingdom and mission. Don't be discouraged because of limited resources. Don't be let down because you think you are not good enough. God uses all and bless them for his mission. The important thing is we should move forward and start doing something for his kingdom. Neil Armstrong, the first person who walked on the moon, he said, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. God will use our small step, and God will bless them, and then that will be one giant leap. God calls us today to participate in his mission and ministry by giving him and others what is in our hands. A miracle will happen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your word today. And as we reflect on the story of uh, the boy's five loaves of bread and two fish, we humbly offer ourselves as uh, instruments for your kingdom and glory. Use us, O oh Lord, to bring nourishment and hope to those in need, just as you multiplied the boy's offering to feed over 5,000 people. May our lives be a testament to your love and grace. Grant us the power and strength to participate in your ministry. We acknowledge that we are your body, your eyes to see the suffering, your feet to walk alongside the brokenhearted, and your hands to bring comfort and healing to those in pain. As we offer our gift to you today, we pray for your blessing upon those who give, those who send, and those who will receive these offerings. Your blessings are abundant, and we trust that you will use this gift to further your work in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now... Um, we celebrate the Lord's table. So Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who honestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our, with our whole heart. We have failed to be obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not he heard the cry of needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So now we can pray in silence. Hear the good news, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and 
a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their end unending hymn. God of power and might, heaven and earth and full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself of us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broken the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you, and do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of this, your mighty act in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is kingdom the power and glory forever. Amen. Because there is one law we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one love. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. So I invite you, all of you, to come forward and then you take uh, uh, the pre-packed, the Holy Communion uh, uh, element and then you uh, take it, the bread and juice and then you know you lay down the altar lay and you pray and then you go back to it. So please come forward.
everybody has the um, hold the basket. This is the body of Christ.
We give you thanks for the, this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So please stand if you are able, and we sing together hymn book number 381. So we praise the God, Lord. Go into the world and meet the people around you, and they need love and grace. And God has already given us the strength and power to fulfill the mission. So step out in faith and serve others with love and grace. May the loving God, the gracious Lord our Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit help us and be with us from now and forever. Amen.